how the world has been focused on so many other things, the Black Lives Matter and Antifa protests and riots across the United States and in the UK, and of course the coronavirus pandemic, India and China have had a military clash. Let me quote to you from CNN, which talks about the clash which left 20 Indian soldiers dead and how that's spiraling into an economic war between the two countries too. Here's a story in CNN. Authorities in India are hitting pause on more than $600 million in deals with Chinese companies in the wake of a deadly border clash with India. Officials in the western Indian state of Maharashtra said Monday they were reviewing agreements with three Chinese companies as they seek clarity from the Indian government on how or whether to proceed. And I also see that on social media, many Indian celebrities are making little videos telling ordinary Indians to start taking Chinese products out of their life bit by bit, Chinese cell phones, Chinese apps, to unhook from that country that is now engaged in a kind of war with them. Finally, I see China's own propaganda industry shaming India for even quarreling with China. And this menacing tweet published by Global Times, an official outlet of the Chinese Communist Party that implies China could crush India in a war. It has more nuclear weapons as well as more conventional weapons. This is extremely bellicose talk that has actually turned into a shooting battle, if not a war. Joining us now to try to make sense of it is our friend Gordon Chang an author, a columnist, and I encourage you to follow him on Twitter at Gordon G. Chang. Gordon, great to see you again. I don't think the world has paid enough attention to this battle of the titans. No, certainly not, because you had the 20 Indian soldiers killed. We don't know how many Chinese were killed, but it could very well be 35. And you got to remember that this is not just a contest between India and China. This is very close to Pakistan. So we could have three nuclear armed neighbors involved in a conflict. This is terrifying to me. Can you give us a little bit about the background of the border? There are border issues everywhere with China these days. We've talked before about the, the sea uh, disputes for territory in the uh, uh, Scarborough Shoals and places like that. Tell us about this boundary between India and China. Yeah, this boundary is the line of actual control, but it is not demarked uh, on the ground. Um, and so there are these disputes as to where China ends and India begins. But we know that this clash took place south of the line of actual control. In other words, in Indian controlled territory. And also over the last weeks, um, since basically the beginning of May, um, Chinese troops have moved into areas that are not disputed. So this is an aggressive move. And of course, India is pushing back. We had that June 15th clash and could very well have more to come. There are more talks now between China and India to try to disengage, but the Chinese are reinforcing their side of the border. So this doesn't look good, Ezra. Now, what's the rationale here? You would think that President Xi Jinping has his hands full. The economy is slowing down, massive American tariffs. The, the coronavirus seems like it's having a second wave in China. There's so many things flashing on his dashboard. Why would he open up a new front? Or is that precisely it, to distract from the other troubles? Yeah, this is like one of the most important questions that the world must ask. Um, and I don't really know the answer to it, but I do think that this shows fragility in the Chinese system because they are seeing a closing window of opportunity for the reasons you mentioned. And the Chinese economy is actually much worse than most people think. It's probably not going to recover this quarter. That would mean a technical recession because they had a contraction the first quarter. This is something that Chinese people are not used to. And it's, I think, having political implications. So we see China with this wolf warrior diplomacy really lashing out at not just India, but the South China Sea, East China Sea neighbors, also increased tempo of dangerous intercepts of the U.S. Navy and the global commons, um, threats to take over Kazakhstan. Um, this, this is really, really dangerous. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.